What's good everybody? It's your boy Hamza from Utter Gaming. I know guys it's been a super long time. I missed you and I hope you guys missed us. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of the subscribers who stuck with us guys. We're going to be doing a giveaway about that so please make sure you guys stay tuned for the details on that. As you guys can see we're in a brand new setup. There's a whole lot of things. I haven't gotten a haircut. My beard's getting a little bit long. It's kind of nasty. But anyways guys if you guys want to know about my tournament report and I took Sword Soul Tenue to this remote dual YCS which was my first YCS. I did okay. I wish I could have done better but whatever. I'll tell you guys the details later. Let's get right into this report. All right, guys. So starting off with the deck profile, of course, we are going to be talking about uh, probably one of the best cards in the deck. It's going to be Triple um, Ecclesia, the Virtuous, and the Awesome, Awesome Ecclesia, whatever. Um, she's really good, and honestly, she put in a lot more work than I thought she would have, just because um, through cards like Token Collector, very annoying cards like that, you can hold Ecclesia in your hand when they summon uh, the Token Collector plus like another monster. You can just link the monsters away, summon your Shaman, and then special the Ecclesia. Then use Ecclesia's effect tribute away, or you can just special summon the Ecclesia and then just synchro summon off using her because she's a tuner. And yes, this did come up. Um, I played a matchup where like I had to like tribute set my Long Yun, flip Long Yun up, and then normal Ecclesia and go into Baroness like that to play around. There can only be one. It was a really weird interaction, but you definitely play three of her. And of course, um, make sure you guys if you play the DPE version to not forget that. Um, her effect to like add back from the graveyard is a mandatory effect so it has to resolve no matter what so make sure you guys know about that um in the dp variant so that's it for the ecclesias of course you play three ecclesias like why would you play anything else and then of course i'm playing uh triple mo yi i'm playing triple long yun and i'm playing double tyus okay so these ratios are super standard i know a lot of people are cutting uh three long yun i don't know why because he's like literally one of the best starters in your deck if you use Long Yun plus Ashuna, there's like a super niche combo that I can show you guys in another video. But again, Mo Yi is really good. You have to watch out though, because sometimes people will uh, droll you on like the Emergence Search or the Desire Search. So getting Mo Yi will punish you. So sometimes it's better to actually grab Taya. Um, yeah, this ratio, I wouldn't really change to be honest. Maybe a third Taya for like the grindier games. But if you're in that sort of situation, I feel like you may have messed up because um, Adhara can just add back any of these cards. So I feel like this is the best ratio. Um, don't change it at all. Don't play the big guy because he doesn't really do anything. So yeah, love these ratios. Um, Long Gun was definitely, definitely MVP. Being able to burn for 12. Make sure you guys remember that. Um, don't forget this or else you're going to miss out on a lot of damage. Um, then for the 10 E's, we're playing Triple Ashuna, playing Double Vashuda, Double Adhara, and the one Shtana. So, um, Ashuna is super uh, standard. We don't really need to talk about this that much. Like, you know, special her, do like your full combo, whatever. Um, Vashuda is also super standard. Um, I'm playing 2-2. Two, two, um, and honestly, it didn't really come up until my last round where I desired to banish both my Adharas and prevent me from OTKing. I ended up losing that game. And then I went to game 3 and ended up losing as well. So it was kind of like a freebie game too. But uh, that sort of stuff is like variance. You can't really beat yourself over too much. So I, I wouldn't really change these ratios um, at all. And then I play the one Shtana. And you guys will see why I play the one Shtana. She's actually really good because when you activate Heavenly Dragon Cycle, you can dodge a lot of cards like Imperm, cards like that. And I'll show you guys a little interaction um, when I get to that card. But again, these tenures are really good because they help you play through so many things going second. And if you see this plus this or this plus this, um, you can just go ahead and make like a free uh, level 8 synchro while going second to break board. I feel like the 10e variant right now is probably the best variant. You definitely don't want to play the DPE variant because it kind of doesn't really do enough going second. You only play like two Vashudos or whatever, and I just personally feel like it's not that good. So I would recommend playing the 10e's for sure. Then, of course, we play the one FDK card, which is Prolos. So this is the last second decision I decided to play. And shout out to my older brother because he's the one who told me, make sure you play Protoss. He's like, it's an FDK card. And wow, every single time I would just summon Protoss, you summon Protoss, you go dark. And that's it. No DP, no PK cards, uh, no Anaconda. They can't summon Zeke, um, the Sky Striker deck. There's a lot of things that it sh shuts off. Yeah, against birds, it's kind of a little poo, but whatever. You have your other negates as well. And obviously, you're never just ending on Protoss, right? You're probably ending with like Shishao, Baron, plus something else. So, um, yeah, at the end of the uh, day, I'll show you guys like uh, the end board that you kind of want to go for. But then moving on uh, for the hand traps, I decided to main drill. This is kind of like a medical. I was expecting to play against like a lot of like. Um, Drytron, I didn't want to lose to Drytron, like Drytron's so OP, I know it's not represented, I didn't want to lose to Drytron, I didn't want to lose to Birds, um, that's the reason why I main deck Droll and Lockbird, but to be honest, it actually didn't come up a lot, and scenarios where I had Droll, I thought Ash would have been better, again, we were expecting a lot of Birds, um, Invoke variants, Flunder variants, so like Droll hits those, but at the same time, Ash kind of, kind of might have been able to do the exact same thing, um, in like a little more efficient way, it could be more versatile, it could hit a lot more decks, um, but yeah, um, that was just Droll. Would I change this for Ash? Probably. I'd probably move Droll to the side. And then moving on to the spell cards, we're playing Triple Pot Desires. It's probably the best card in the deck, to be honest. You just want to start with Pot Desires. In one of my rounds, I actually didn't start Pot Desires. 
um and maybe the sequencing caused me to end up losing who knows but in, in hindsight 2020 i do feel like i should have bought her desires first but again this card is really good um being able to just banish 10 draw two and he goes hand in hand with chenging where if you already have chenging on board he can trigger the banish card from the graveyard and on the field if you don't have chenging on board he just gives chenging an extra 1000 attack and makes your opponent lose a thousand attack and sometimes like you actually desires twice and you don't care because as long as you see names you can just recycle everything with adhara so it's it's kind of op um in that regard you definitely don't want to play um less like if you're playing two desires you're kind of trolling um prosperity is good as well but that's only good if you play the fusion destiny variant and it turns off cards like mo yi and that's the main issue why um i feel like prosperity and going for one card whereas desires gets you two and then mo yi gets you three um i feel like the trade-off just isn't worth it uh, to warrant you playing uh, prosperity with a dpe version um then some more spells you pay of course the sword soul spells so the sword soul rota sword soul emergence and we play the one reborn spell so the reborn spell is really weird because sometimes you want to see it because it's like really op you can like reborn whatever long young pitches and in that case he's really really good like the reborn spell is really good but i oftentimes saw myself signing this card out a lot going second and even sometimes going first for like better cards that did stuff when i went first just because like this card's okay like it doesn't really feel amazing it just feels okay and with Sword Soul, you kind of don't want to make like the big synchro board, but you still want to be able to recur resources. So um, having to commit into this line of play, whereas you can add like an emergence for follow up play, you can get a blackout to pop cards is like a little better in that regard, because um, nowadays everyone can break your board. It's just can you remake your board? And that's what Sword Soul is really good at. It's really good at just doing like the bare minimum, but then your opponent struggles with it. So that's what I found about this. And then, of course, Merge is like the best card in the deck because like it can literally search you 10 if you have a synchro, it can search you protos. And like this means that you have like three plus Heavenly Dragon Cycle. You have seven copies of protos. That's crazy. And then again, um, it can search you a long one as well, um, which is like another really important extender. I wouldn't change these ratios at all, um, it, but you definitely have to play that card. But I sat it out a lot. And then, of course, we played the triple Heavenly Dragon Cycle and like or circle sorry and this card overperformed for me oh man like the amount of hand traps that i would eat like veiler effect veiler uh infinite impermanence i would just chain heaven drag cycle tribute card and summon it and the the thing is about this card is you can tribute one worm monster you control add any worm monster from your deck to your hand so this adds long young this adds um, mo yi this adds um uh protos this adds a lot of cards and then he has a second effect where you can banish this card if you control a non-effect monster and add any tenure card but you can only use one effect um make sure you guys remember that but this is uh, really good because when you're playing with protos this essentially gives you three six and then protos you have seven copies of protos which is actually kind of crazy but uh, one of the main reasons why I decided to play this because again um, we expect a lot of effect veiler and infinite impermanences and that's like a really really um, potent card in the meta right now so the reason why I decided to play um, heavenly dragon uh, circle over the vessel is strictly because of the interaction with uh, Shtana and Mo Yi or Taya and basically this is what it is okay you go ahead and you go normal sun Mo Yi you go Mo Yi effect you like reveal something whatever they go effect veiler you can chain heavenly dragon cycle it'll tribute the Mo Yi and you'll add Shtana to the hand okay Moyi will resolve and you'll summon a token. And then since you control uh, no effect monsters, you can summon the Stana. The token's a tuner, so you can go into Shija like that. So I felt like the payoff was just way too good to not play it. And again, um, this card really saved me in like one of my rounds where like I got like triple effect veiler impermed and like I was able to play through it because I saw this. So I would definitely um, recommend you guys to play Heavenly Dragon uh, Circle over Vessel. Now the reason I don't like Vessel is just because Vessel by itself isn't combo. Um, Vessel plus Heavenly Dragon Circle isn't combo. But if you see a Tenyi monster plus Heavenly Dragon Circle, it is combo. Because essentially what you're doing is you're special summoning Vashuda, then you're using this card to tribute Vashuda to get a Moyi to your hand or to get a Taya to your hand. So you guys see what I mean, right? It's another copy of Emergence and that sort of stuff. So I definitely feel like you should absolutely be playing three of this card. If not three, you can go like two, one with Vessel. But personally, I'm not sold on Vessel all too much. And it's not a 10 card as well. I know a lot of people are playing like three and one, but like the reasoning for is that you can search it, but you can't because it's not 10 card. So like, what are you doing? So I would definitely say that play um, triple Heavenly Dragon Cycle. Then another card that overperformed for me was Forbidden Chalice. This card was like absolutely the nuts. I was chalicing Sites, I was chalicing DPEs, I was chalicing uh, uh, Token Collectors, I was chalicing a whole lot of cards. I feel like you definitely need to main Scythe, especially if you play Sword Soul, just because Token Collector, but also going second, it's really good. I didn't want to main Droplets. I know that Droplets has its like specific interaction where you can like go Droplet, pitch a Tenyi, and then do something, but the Tenyis have mean that you have to control non-effect monsters, so like it's not really that good if you think about it. So I just decided to play Chalice, and then... Um, yeah, Chalice was really good. Um, would I cut it? Absolutely not. I definitely would not cut Chalice. You definitely play uh, three Chalice in your deck. 
And then um, the last trap cards in my deck, I play double, uh, triple infinite impermanence. This card again is, is really powerful. Um, I do regret not playing like more hand traps, like maybe Ash, maybe fit in like an effect builder somewhere there, just to be able to stop my opponent from making a big board and then being able to break the board. Because Sword Soul is really good at going second, but again, um, I like my ratios. I didn't break too much on hand traps. I only lost to like a little annoying things, but whatever, that's fine. So that's uh, triple imperm, and then another medical that I decided to make was play two Soul Soul blackouts. So. The reasoning for two blackouts specifically is um in the grind game of course blackouts good a lot of people are playing tc boo mystic mind so you want to be able to get two blackouts but there's another little uh interaction that i'll show you guys right now with the two blackouts where it's um you for example have long yun and you have to go like say for example like one of your uh, cards gets interrupted and you have long yun plus this whatever if you have a uh, long yun discard ashuna if i can find it for you guys real quick so say you have long yun plus ashuna right basically the reason why i take two blackout is if you go long yun pitch ashuna special uh, long yun long yun gets you a token since you control a non-effect monster you can banish ashuna and then this is another reason why you play shitana because she has like a lot of like cool little um you know like cool little applications so you summon shitana right here then you link or synchro these two off sorry into your shisha which is uh right over here so you're gonna grab your shisha right and then shisha will trigger on summon to banish the trap card the trap card will grab you another token and then you go in long young and uh the token away into cheng ying so just off of those cards alone you end with cheng ying and thing and uh shisha with uh uh this guy and long young so it's it's pretty good um in that regard and that's the main reason why i decided to play um two blackout um, again, because you use one blackout like aggressively kind of to uh, set up your board and then you use the second blackout to play defensively and pop cards. So that was it for my deck. I played 41. Um, 41st card was the uh, Protoss, of course, but I mean, it's an FTK card. You definitely should play it. <clears throat> Moving on to the side deck. Um, I decided to play Triple Cosmic Cyclone. This card like overperformed like Cycloning Scythe, uh, TC Boos. This card was just absolutely crazy. Um, Mystic Mine as well. This card is really good. I played definitely evenly matched. Maybe I could have played more, but I feel like there wasn't too too many tier one backward decks in the form right now where I didn't want to play it. And of course, I didn't like Lightning Storm because if I played into like the Heavenly Prison guy, um, Lightning Storm's dead. Same with like Twin Twisters, but <clears throat> uh, Cosmic Cycle and Evenly Match aren't. So that's why I decided to play them. Then I decided to play Double Anti Spell and Imperial Order. So uh, you can make an argument to play three Anti Spell and an Order. For me personally, I just like uh, having three cards when I go first for sure. Then being anti-spell in order. I know I see a lot of people playing Judgment. Maybe Judgment would have been better. But I played against like uh, an Invoke guy who like opened all spells. And he literally like, if it was Judgment, it would have been different than if it was with anti-spell. So I feel like this is like safe to go first. Like you don't really want to cut these. And then <clears throat> a lot of cards let me down. So Dark Ruler is one of them. Again, I was expecting a lot of birds. But I just never saw Dark Ruler, so like, it kind of underperformed for me, honestly. Maybe I'll cut this for Droplet to deal with cards like Token Collector, because then I have more cards to deal with Token Collector. But <clears throat> I mean, I really wish that I really wish that this card came out more than it was. Like I sat it in a lot, never saw the card. Um, another card that was actually pretty good was Godarla. Um, and the reason why we decided to play Godarla is I didn't want to lose to the Crooked Cook deck. I know that if they goes and lock you, um, you're locked into water, so like Gam is better. But I felt like uh, Wind Barrier Statue was more prevalent than the Goes and Lock, so. We decided to play the wind kaijus. Um, I actually ended up winning my game one against birds because like I kaiju the double dragon lords and I OTK'd him through it, which is pretty funny. And then the last two cards of my side deck were uh, double DD Crow. DD Crow in theory was good, you know, DD Crow side, DD Crow like a lot of cards. I'm um, DD Crow DPE, it just never came up, honestly. So, honestly, the cards I would probably cut would be like DD Crow um, and Dark Rulers. Um, probably play like Droplet and um, maybe some other cards to stop talking like to be honest. But other than that, pretty good. So now moving on to the extra deck, you definitely play Trouble Monk. Anybody who says that 3 Monk doesn't come up, uh, probably isn't playing into a grind game or just getting very unlucky, or very lucky, sorry. Because a lot of the times you make 2 Monk no matter what. And sometimes you need the 3rd Monk um, to link it to like a Shaman to get like an extra grind bounce. So I feel like Trouble Monk is pretty mandatory. <coughs> and then of course the 1 Shaman. This card is like really, really good for me. Like going Shaman, discard Taya, Reborn Taya, make like Draco Berserker Tenyi. Um, it was really good. And then um, her effect to like when you have like uh the normal monster on board to declare and then you use her effect to pop a card it's like really good as well i think it's a really underrated ability and you guys should really look into uh using it because like there's sometimes problematic monster and defense who are kind of fat 
but if you have like this and this you go uh monk declare activate shaman pop a card redeclare attack attack and it's like it's like a whole bunch of thing i didn't opt to play the uh link three maybe it could have came up like i had s a space in my x deck for sure like hindsight 2020 but the link three didn't really come up for me as much as i thought it would have so i didn't decide to play it in testing and then we played the one yazzy um yazzy did come up technically speaking but the only issue was i banished all my adharas because you go adhara longyun into yazzy when you get um uh token collector and then uh you summon yazzy yazzy pop token collector and the yazzy effect will summon taya taya banish the yazzy token you like you know the whole thing so um in theory he's really good and then pair him with his ba uh yang zing brothers which were uh baxia um these were also uh very very good um maybe you could cut the second baxia the second baxia honestly didn't really come up to with come up as much i can't even speak english it didn't come up as much but again he's still there because he can reborn ecclesia which is like a really really important thing that you guys should keep at the back of your mind so that's why i decided to play um those ratios one dragite um it came up um i made like one time and the guy's like oh i lost anyways but like dragite was good against my deck but i mean this is one of the cards like i said you cut oh uh yeah and then i played the one chow fang um chow fang in theory is for the when you open the tennies you can make Chao Feng protect yourself from like effect builders and abuse, like the likes. Um, again, again it FTKs against Drytron as well. If you play the Tenyus, you for sure play Chao Feng. Whether Chao Feng comes up or not is different, but you definitely play Chao Feng uh, anyways. <coughs> then I played uh, Double Shi Shao. You definitely play Double Shi Shao. This guy just like this guy's kind of crazy. Remember, you can only use one effect, but like his effects are actually insane. Like Rota. Then during your opponent's turn, he's a banish negate. So like, that's kind of that's kind of crazy, man. And he's not even a Rota. Like even under Droll, you banish the trap card and just get the trap card uh, or get a token and then keep comping from there. Um, it's pretty good. And then for the tens, or sorry, one more eight is Drago Berserker. Um, honestly, I was hoping that I could have linked Drago Berserker off into Monk of the Tenny. So I didn't like a DB grinder video where you could like do this. But unfortunately, like it never came up. But I was hoping it did come up. Um, he helps you kill through like DPE and stuff. Cause like you summon Drago Berserker, you probably have like another ten on board. You go like Drago Berserker, swing a DPE, um, effect to gain. You can't banish the DPE because like it's a damage that ability. But like he's at like 55, you just punch and then punch again. So he's like our little boral tour and then for the tens Cheng Ying overperformed maybe i'll play two um <clears throat> ready rose yeah um ready rose ready rose is really good um again for dpe decks when you clear the board you just ready rose or whole graveyard pks it's really good um drytron is really good um ellis really good sky is really good please guys don't cut this card i know people are cutting it please don't cut it in the one bear nest um <clears throat> could i have honestly hindsight 2020 again I, I i love saying that right now but the cards i could have probably cut would have been dragite the second uh baxia and um yeah so these cards what you could do is with them is if you guys are wondering you guys can cut one of these for final sigma my brother was telling me about final sigma that big math mech guy because he's some she's out you go she's out banish the trap card level four plus eight is 12 you make final sigma he becomes like literally towers like he's unaffected by life like he becomes the best guy ever and then uh you can play like white aura whale you can play like shen shen none of those cards actually came up um but yeah guys so that was it for my uh, tournament report. So guys, that was the end of the tournament report. If you guys like the report, you like my style, the new setup we got, my beard, maybe even the background, my little One Piece poster, please guys go ahead and leave a like in the video. If you guys, if you see that one like, let's get it to one like, two likes, three likes, four likes, five likes. Without further ado guys, I'm Hamza. Like I always say, keep on shining, never go find your dreams. Peace.